Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of mzra.com and in this video I'm going to share with you how the three hour rule saved my life. M0A Online Ground School. How are you all doing? Are you loving this new flight planning series? All of June, all of July, we're diving into ways to make us smarter, better, faster, safer, ultimately, at VFR and IFR Flight Plan. All our member-only webinars are geared towards this. And if you're not an Online Ground School member, I encourage you to go to m0atrial.com to take a free two-week trial. Hop on some of those webinars for two weeks and check all of that out as well. I fly by something called the three-hour rule. If you've been following myself and the M0A team for any amount of time, you've heard me teach on this idea of the three-hour rule. Here's what the three-hour rule really says to me in plain English. From the moment I start that plane and say clear prop, to the moment the line personnel bring me in and tell me to shut down, the clock better not say more than three hours of flight time. From clear prop to shut down, I start a timer. It's not to exceed three hours. Now, that's for me in 2-3 Mike Zulu. You might fly an aircraft that you have the four hour rule, the three and a half hour rule, the, the five hour rule, I, it depends how much fuel you really hold. My goal is I want to be at, at a worst case scenario taxiing up to the line guy with what the POH, what I believe is an hour and a half of fuel. Significantly more than what the FAR aim uh, requires of us. But again, that's just the bare minimum. We always wanna go above and beyond. The three hour rule came out of a story and I've taught it in my book, Aviation Mastery, and I've taught it at different seminars I've done before. Um, way, way back in the day, we were doing something called the Good Pilot Tour. To give you some perspective, it's when I was first sharing uh, my accident analysis of the JFK Jr. Um, accident when I was really going all around the country uh, sharing that as a seminar. And we were trying to fly into, uh, I wanna say it was Louisville, Kentucky. And we were just left Ann Arbor, Michigan. We were flying to Louisville, Kentucky. And I don't remember all the airports, but I remember all the different diversions. And I wanna say the number was eight. Eight different, the weather was so bad. We were shooting approaches, going mist. We are going here, there was, there was thunderstorms. It was just that summer storms, really messing things up. We ended up landing at, not at Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we landed somewhere, grabbed a rental car and drove into the seminar that night at Louisville, Kentucky. You never have to be anywhere in aviation, do you? But I remember I diverted eight different times. And with that, I remember by diversion number four, number five, uh, the controller coming on and saying, at the time we were still 5-9 Quebec, not 2 3 Mike Zulu yet, hey, uh, 7 five, nine Quebec, uh, how you doing on fuel? And I remember telling him, hey, I've got two hours of fuel left. And you could hear the relief in his voice because everyone else was declaring minimum fuel and, and pan, 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 and I didn't hear any maydays that day, but there were a lot of people. It wasn't just us diverting. And I had the three-hour rule, and the three-hour rule really saved our life that day. Now, by the eighth diversion, we landed somewhere around the, the 320, the 330 mark. We, we didn't intend to break that three-hour rule, but because we had shortened up our legs on that flight, it allowed us to land with more than enough fuel because fuel equals options. So next time you're faced with a flight, it's a really long leg. It's going to be three hours, 20 minutes. And you say, okay, well, my POH says I have four hours of fuel or four and a half hours of fuel. I can make it. You're right. You, you probably could make it and you might get away with it. And that's the problem with aviation. Oftentimes we get away with things and we keep trying to get away with things. And one day we don't get away with it. So you may hold four and a half hours of fuel. And yes, that leg may only be three hours and 20 minutes. That's assuming no vectors, no holding, no diversions, no long way around the backside of the storm, none of that. That's a straight line distance. By the way, that's assuming the wind does what it says it's gonna do that day. If I'm looking at a three hour, 20 minute cruise flight leg, I wanna shorten that up to really like a, a 2.30 at the max cruise flight leg. Because remember, my clock for me starts from clear prop to shutdown. So that includes all the taxi time on both departure and on landing, which you say, well, Jason, you're not burning that much fuel during that. That's fine. 
it's extra fuel to me. So when I'm flight planning, I'm really taking my 90 knots that I, that I cruise at and I'm building two hour, 20, two hour, maybe 30 minute legs, giving me 15 minutes on either side for start, taxi, run up and taxi and shut down on the other side to stay within the three hour rule. So what's the rule for you and your aircraft? You might have the two and a half hour rule. I don't know what it is. Maybe, I know there'll be the comment, Jason, my bladder can't even make it three hours. Well, good, your bladder will save your life <laughs> for keeping you from flying too long. People who hurt themselves in airplanes, often you can find they end up flying much longer than they should have. They kept going when they should have stopped. Just like last week's video. Have the, did you watch last week's video? But having the alternate along your route of flight, give yourself the easy way out. Give yourself the gut check moment to say, I'm burning a little more fuel than I thought. I forecast a 10 knot tailwind and somehow I must've got it backwards because I got a 10 knot headwind, right? I'm gonna land, grab some fuel, go to the bathroom and figure this thing out. That's aviation for you. So what rule are you adopting? Is it the three hour rule, two and a half, four hours? The goal is to land up to the line personnel with an hour and a half of fuel. So reverse engineer that math. Let me know in the comments down below. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.